So I didn't expect to like Hades. I hadn't seen much about it at first, but I don't usually like roguelike or roguelite games, so I didn't plan on playing it. But after absolutely everyone started talking about it, and after I saw overwhelmingly positive reviews, I figured, okay, I'll give it a shot. And then suddenly it was March, and I realized I hadn't uploaded a single video because my free time had gone straight into this amazing game that I still think about constantly. My last video, which was about Undertale, was a project close to my heart, and I knew it was going to take a long time, but it probably took longer because of all my time in Hades. I wasn't even planning on writing about Hades either. However, I spent so much time with it and grew to love it so much, it had re-sparked that childhood, I can't wait to get home and play video games feeling for me, that it seemed like a shame not to bring it here to my channel. Even though, if you're familiar with my other reviews, you might see some repeated information. But I'll try to address what makes Hades a uniquely engaging experience. Like a typical screen therapy review, I'll be looking at how Hades affects players psychologically, and using positive media psychology research, I'll bring up what benefits we can experience from playing it. Really quick, positive media psych is the field that this channel's essays are dedicated to. It includes research about how media, like games and movies, can be used as tools to help us develop emotional or psychological well-being. My channel is devoted to sharing methods of positive media literacy, which is the application of positive media psych knowledge in our daily interactions with media. For Hades, I'll argue that the reason it can pull us in so well and relieve our stress is because it's a perfect alternating balance of flow and narrative engagement. When I wasn't wrapped up in the task-oriented flow of the dungeon crawl mechanics, coordinating my boons and strategizing which reward my next chamber should offer, I was switching to a different part of my brain that was engaged in the relationship-based storytelling mechanics. The perfect balance of these two states of play create a singularly engaging and absorbing adventure. I'll also briefly touch on how this game might be a little too good at keeping our attention, and ways to avoid overuse. So with that, let's dive into the science behind the play experience of Hades. So I've never had a good relationship with roguelikes or even roguelites. I'd get overwhelmed by the challenge and the long journey ahead, and when I didn't make enough progress in my first few hours, I'd drop the game. I'll admit I have something of a fixed mindset with these kinds of games. The fixed perspective is that I'm just not good at them and can't get better, so why should I try? A growth mindset, something I've talked about on this channel before, is the opposite perspective of enjoying challenge and seeing adversity as a chance to learn new skills. But to my surprise, Hades was just… fun? Sure, there was challenge, we start out with a tiny health bar and little defense. But when I died, it didn't feel like failure. Instead, every death rewarded me with a chance to return to the hub, which was the House of Hades. And there I met interesting mythological characters, I could purchase upgrades, renovations, explore the fun, tiny world-building details, and I'd discover more about who Zagreus and the others were. And of course, I have to mention just how visually and musically rewarding Hades is. I never get tired of looking at this game. The only word that comes to mind when thinking about the design of the characters, their voices, the sound mixing, and all the details of the world is indulgent. Running around, I'm constantly appreciating the small things and the funny little shades, and I almost never skip dialogue. The fact that this game with such endlessly unique scripts is 100% voice acted just feels luxurious. And the music is amazing. Without gushing too much, in summary, playing Hades is a real treat for the senses. After a day of writing or looking at spreadsheets, it's a gift to look at and participate in something so beautiful and dynamic. All of this helped to take the edge off of any failure states in the game. When I'd enter Tartarus each time, I didn't feel the sting of, oh, I'm gonna die, this is gonna be so frustrating. I was just endlessly curious about what I'd see and accomplish. And once I'd earned more darkness and I was able to start having good runs, I was able to tap in into one of the biggest, most refined benefits this game offers. Flow. If you see my Celeste or Doom video, you might remember Flow and its potential benefits. Flow describes the state in which one is completely immersed in an activity. It's that feeling of being in the zone. 
It's when you're challenged just enough that you lose track of time and even forget about yourself. To achieve a state of flow, an activity must challenge one's skills, but not to the point that it causes frustration or anxiety. But it can't be too easy that you get bored. It's a sweet spot of performance where you feel like you're simultaneously succeeding and mastering a skill while learning how to get better at it. Professional musicians experience flow regularly, so do athletes when training for a competition, and it can even occur when you get lost in a really good conversation with friends. Games, however, are usually designed to inspire long sessions of flow, and so we might need to set reminders for ourselves, like on Twitch, to remember to hydrate or take bio breaks since it can be very immersive. Flow is an intrinsically enjoyable experience and makes us feel good in the moment. It helps us feel more masterful and competent no matter what else is going on in our lives. And that sense of competence is an important psychological resource we naturally seek ways to replenish. That's why playing flow games like Hades after a hard day feels so good. We're restocking our mental reserves of mastery so that we have the energy and confidence to face other challenges in life. Studies have shown that the benefits of flow include positive emotions, enjoyment, and subjective well-being. Flow also encourages us to drop all that latent stress and anxieties that we were holding on to. We can forget about those little worries and fixations. Instead, we focus solely on the present moment. I know that when I play Hades after a stressful day, I immediately experience the transportation and absorption of flow. I'll emerge from Hades two hours later a little hungry, but altogether less stressed, less anxious, and in a newly stabilized, revitalized mood. And unlike with other roguelike games, I'm not always thinking about the end. For Hades, in fact I don't really want it to end. And this is a great example of how Flo encourages us to live in the present moment instead of chasing results. This game allows me to reroute my usually overactive mind that's always considering jobs and responsibilities, instead into analyzing combinations of boons, percentage boosts on my attacks, and finding the best way to defeat each enemy. It's a great way to disrupt some of my overthinking and anxious thought cycles. However, this task-oriented flow is only one side of the coin of Hades. As soon as you emerge from the river Styx, you switch from that task flow part of the mind to the part of our mind invested in the narrative of the game. I love how the story of Hades trickles at such a deliberate and natural pace. It's full of surprises as well that keeps things fresh. So whenever I die, the disappointment would last like 5 seconds and then I'd remember I have people to see, upgrades to buy, and relationships to deepen. When I got close to escaping the first time, I even worried that maybe I wouldn't be able to get to know more about my favorite characters. Of course, that's not something you have to worry about. The story carries on, and in fact, becomes richer after your first escape. This is all an example of how Hades elicits a great sense of narrative engagement. Narrative engagement is the feeling of being immersed in the narrative world and feeling cognitively and emotionally dedicated to the characters and events in the story. One of the biggest ways to keep players engaged in your narrative is through internal realism. This is how consistent the story world is, how well the characters are scripted to react to certain situations, how realistic the world seems not compared to our reality, but compared to its own established reality. This is actually really tough for a lot of video games. All gamers have to be really forgiving and routinely ignore typical internal realism hiccups in games. We accept that NPCs repeat themselves if you talk to them twice. They won't react to most of the weird things you do or wear. Mechanics or objectives might not meaningfully attach to the story or a character. And people might contradict themselves or other story elements too easily. We learn to shrug these things off and try to stay immersed in the game anyways. But while playing Hades, we don't even have to try. The characters behave in consistent patterns and are characterized very well by the writers and voice actors. And my favorite, they don't, or at very least very rarely, repeat themselves. And the gods notice when we're on death's door or notice when we have someone else's boons. Everyone is aware of our crawl and our many lengthy attempts to escape. They even remark on how long it's taking and try to encourage us. Other roguelikes might be a little blind to our hard work. 
there are little to no comments or recognition on how long it's taking us, but having our Sisyphusian journey be a part of our story not only helped me feel immersed in the game, but also helped me feel like I'm not doing too bad. The characters are written to expect me to take a while, and they recognize how hard the journey is. The internal realism of Hades makes it feel like it's a world that really exists on its own, with characters, people, and mechanics that react to each other and seem to recognize what exactly is going on. This all leads to a great narrative engagement, but it's also not too strong. I never feel like the runs are distracting from the story or that the story is distracting from the runs. It's evenly paced, so by the time I've given out my nectar and exhausted all my talking opportunities in the House of Hades, I'm already excited to engage in more flow and jump back into Tartarus to see if I can beat my record or at least collect enough bounties for upgrades I want. Overall. The gameplay is a perfect balancing act, a relay between the flow providing task performance of the dungeon crawl, which feeds our need for mastery, and the emotional and cognitive rewards of narrative engagement. However, for some of us, Hades might be a little too good at keeping us engaged. It's hard to disengage from such a finely tuned flow or narrative experience. Once or twice I convinced myself I could squeeze in another run and then I realized halfway through that no way, I'm way too tired and I'd come out of the play session somehow more tired and with a lower mood than before. This happens to all of us sometimes with other games or with watching TV. And sometimes we might be seeking the typical good feelings or skill building opportunities from playing games but come back to our real lives noticing we forgot to do something important. Hades is a great game, but unfortunately it is one of those titles that is just so engaging that we might lose track of our well-being during play sessions. Positive media literacy is about promoting digital flourishing. This is being able to optimize our time with media and strengthen our regulatory skills to mediate our own unique relationship with media until we're only taking in what we need or what's useful without overdoing it. Although digital flourishing might look different for each one of us and there's no magical standardized number of minutes to spend on a game or watching TV, there are some tips I can offer to keep in mind to promote your own well-being with your favorite media. To avoid overuse and possibly undoing the benefits of a game, we should make it a regular practice to check in with ourselves for diminishing returns. We always pick up a game to feed some intrinsic psychological needs, to relax, to feel mastery, to feel autonomous or connected to others. But there is a point where those benefits are outweighed by the energy we give the game or the opportunity cost of what else needs to be done in our real lives that we're not doing while we're playing. If we pass this threshold, the play will become more of a compulsion and might even feel like a chore while we chase good feelings that keep shrinking into the horizon. The best antidote to these runaway play habits is to start practicing mindfulness. We can put mental checkpoints in our play sessions to reconnect with ourselves. With some games that means using loading screens to check in on your mood, or coming home to our bodies whenever we level up and sort skills. For Hades, we can set up a mental signpost to check in with our mood, energy levels, bodily needs, and real world needs after each run. As Agrius emerges from the sticks, we can emerge from the play experience and remind ourselves, this run will take about 40 minutes. Is there something else that needs my attention or something else I could be doing for myself? Am I still getting more than this game is taking from me? Setting up these mindfulness habits to check in with ourselves takes time and practice. Even I forget sometimes still, but I highly recommend trying them out and eventually it will become second nature to come home to ourselves while playing and make more intentional decisions about what we give our time and energy. So this review was more or less just a love letter to Hades. Hades is a piece of hedonic entertainment created mostly to elicit pleasurable or enjoyable play experiences and doesn't require the same depth of narrative analysis I usually pay to more eudaimonic games I write about that cover emotionally complex, tragic, or inspirational stories. And there's usually a bias against hedonic media like this, that they're somehow lesser than eudaimonic media. One is seen as art and the other is mindless entertainment. But studies have found that we actually benefit from a balance of hedonic and eudaimonic art. Too much or too little of one or the other can leave us out of the loop on good psychological and emotional benefits. So Hades is a great example of how hedonic media still deserves a respected place in our discussions about positive media psychology and a place in our libraries while leading lives of digital flourishing. 
I highly recommend this game to anyone who needs to get away from the little things and sink into an engaging flow state after a long day for some great feeling and great looking adventures. If you'd like to see more about positive media psychology and games and movies, please subscribe. If you know anyone who might be interested in these topics, it'd mean a lot to me if you could share my videos with them too. I'm thinking for my next video, it might be a movie review, so if there are any movie buffs following me, thank you so much for your patience so far. Until then, happy playing.